So we have no idea how 110 round per minute hand cannons are going to get a buff. We just know it's going to happen. And if you haven't noticed by now, I'm pretty damn excited about it. I may or may not have been saving 110 round per minute hand cannons for like the past two years waiting for this moment. Now, unfortunately, some of these are going to get sunset, which kind of sucks. Ain't no two ways about it. But today we're going to be going through a list of the hand cannons you should be snagging on top of a number of other 110s that we'll be putting in like the honorable mention folder. But understand we're only putting it in that folder due to sunset. Okay, so like some of these 110s, we're having to rank higher because they're not getting sunset. You see where I'm coming from? So first on the list, ah, oh, you know you love it, Sturm. Sturm is a big question mark though amongst all 110s. It's an exotic, therefore it's not getting sunset. To be frank, it's the most future proof of 110s as of now. Unless of course Hawkmoon returns to us as a 110 round per minute hand cannon, although we don't think it will. However, there is a weapon that pairs with Sturm that is getting sunset and that of course is Drang. Now Bungie could reissue a Drang in the next expansion, giving us a 2.0 version of the weapon, but they've already done that. They did that with Season of Opulence. But I think what a lot of us are really hoping for is that Sturm actually gets a rework to its exotic perk. Instead of stating that kills with Drang reload the weapon and overflow a bonus damage round, instead, what we're hoping for is that it'll say kills with sidearms will reload the weapon and overflow a bonus damage round. That would be amazing. And of course, would definitely future-proof Sturm for all future sandboxes. Now, Sturm is actually one of the best stat-rolled 110s in the game, especially if you have the Catalyst. We're talking 91 range, 73 handling. All the complaints that folks have about 110s is kind of a race there with Sturm as it definitely doesn't feel as sluggish as other 110s due to that range and handling buff from the Catalyst. One thing where Sturm does lack though is in its aim assist values being substantially less than all other 110 round per minute hand cannons sitting at a nice 50. However, depending on Bungie and how they actually change the exotic part to this weapon or whether or not they just reissue another Drang, Sturm will definitely be a top contender coming in this next sandbox. Another 110 on the list this one that we recently covered, Criminal's Dagger. This is the Iron Banner 110 round per minute hand cannon. One of my favorites in the game. I actually landed a very nice roll with damn near max range stats, snapshot, explosive payload. It actually could get close to 90 range, almost matching that of Sturm with its exotic catalyst. A fantastic weapon. We went over the god rolls the other day. There's a lot of different routes you can go with this. You can still overload it with lethality, kill clip outlaw, etc. But I really liked what I had had on mine. That snapshot perk really breaks that sluggish characteristic that all 110s have, and Criminal's Dagger here just felt really fluid. I liked it a lot. Stat-wise, Criminal's actually has one of the strongest base range stats outside, of course, Sturm, as well as a much superior aim assist stat at 67. Of course, this can get boosted depending on your barrel perks. The main thing to take away from Criminal's Dagger, whatever role you decide to roll on this 110, it's a great filling weapon. Moving on to our next 110 on the list, hands down this has got to be my favorite 110 inside of pve and that is true prophecy that's right guys this is the reissued future war cult hand cannon you love to see it i have landed one of the best rolls you can have on a 110 and that is this roll right here tactical mag for that bump there in magazine overflow which actually tops my primary ammo off when i pick up special or heavy ammo and of course rampage it's a beautiful thing to watch to see that magazine size jump up to 20 plus rounds constantly keeping those rampage times three and instead of sitting there wasting time reloading overflow allows me to constantly keep topping myself off you pair this with an auto loading special this is a fantastic run and gun weapon and again we're talking about one tens from the perspective of pvp a bunch like when we talk about two tapping range bumps all those things what we haven't even talked about is the potential buff that's coming at one tens inside of pve they're actually pretty solid as of now but a lot of people still use other weapons over it other archetypes, whether it's 140s or especially 150s. I feel like Midnight Coup back in the day kind of started that trend. 110s could definitely be looking at an individual buff to their archetype just in raw damage inside of PvE, making True Prophecy a very good option for my PvE players. We're talking Demolitionist, Rampage, Explosive Payload, Time Payload. Combine that with something like Overflow, which to me is still the better trait in that column. And any magazine perk that can boost your mag size, True Prophecy is in great position to be actually one of the best 110s next season. Now, just because we're talking about this weapon from the perspective of PvE, don't overlook it inside of PvP. True Prophecy actually has one of the best 
base range stats just behind Krimmel's Dagger and Sturm. It also has slightly more handling, allowing the weapon to feel a little snappier in your hands, as well as a base plus one default size in its magazine. I was rocking this exact roll, which was such a deadly roll inside of PvE, inside of PvP, and it was doing work. Now, granted, I do think True Privacy is still more gauged at being a top choice inside of PvE than in PvP, but if you're looking for a weapon to really offer the best of both worlds, that won't be sunset until season 14. True Privacy is a fantastic option for you. Also, this is a random loot drop, roll drop, so good luck. Man, those roll loot drops, you just never know. It's like the stars have to align to present you one of these beauties. Now, moving on, that's pretty much all the hand cannons that I would recommend locking down that will future-proof yourself going into the next season. But if you're just looking for raw damage, weapons that are just gonna pop off for you, now we get into nasty territory. First up, we went over the other day, a weapon that has slid underneath the radar and we don't know how this weapon's gonna be addressed as it is a lone single weapon archetype in the game and that is Warden's Law. This is a double fire archetype hand cannon, hard hitting twin fire rounds. It does one extra damage over our aggressive hand cannons. It has some pretty decent rolls, but despite how good its rolls are, one of the biggest drawbacks to Warden's Law is how inconsistent its hit registration can be. You land a crit, you think you're gonna get full damage, no, suddenly, at the last minute, only one of the bullets connects, thus halving your damage. This happens in both PvP and PvE. Extremely annoying, but it does still do just slightly more damage than aggressives. If that's the case, depending on if Bungie actually goes in there and applies a flat crit buff damage to all of our hand cannons, Warden's Law could be one of the few hand cannons that could potentially two-tap mid-resilience guardians next season. Overall, I love this archetype. I think it's such a neat concept that Bungie was trying to do here. They just kind of gave up on it. I will forever hold on to Warden's Law and hope that this weapon will become something in the future. Now, another 110 that shouldn't surprise you. One of the best villain 110s in the game, Duke MK44. Ah, uh, yeah. So many good things about this hand cannon. Number one, you can roll things like Rapid Hit and Kill Clip together, or even Rapid Hit and Rampage. Although I will say Rapid Hit is still a good perk. It was better before this past season as it did receive a nerf slightly still not a bad perk still gives you a nice reload bump and on a 110 where recoil to some is unmanageable having that extra bump and stability with each crit shot can allow for some major multi-kill scenarios duke is a very good weapon i've always liked it and even though it is getting sunset next season and regular crucible and low level content duke is still going to be a top tier option now moving on to another 110 which i hate to see getting sunset as it's been the 110 round from in a hand cannon that we've had the least amount of time with is Loud Lullaby. Loud Lullaby is the lectern 110 round from in a hand cannon. I've obtained a couple decent rolls. Only one that I actually kept. This roll right here, Outlaw Explosive Payload. It's got great flinch capabilities. You also can't hate on this weapon due to its look. Inside of PVE though, Loud Lullaby had fantastic rolls. Outlaw, Demolitionist, Subsistence, Rampage, Multi-Kill Clip. There were so many things you could do with this hand cannon. Unfortunately, there's been no extension on its sunset date, meaning it will be sunset next season, which really bums a lot of us out considering we just got this hand cannon. And this was like the hand cannon that was on the cover of Shadow Key. So yeah, I kind of got a soft spot in my heart for this weapon. It looks amazing. I really wish it got an extension there, but whatever. Moving on though to another 110 that has slipped through the cracks. Maybe you remember it, maybe you don't. If you don't, it's okay. Thin line. Oh, y'all remember this weapon? Thin line was actually a hand cannon that shipped in Forsaken. I think I've only seen one other content creator actually cover this hand cannon, and that was Cami Cakes. I believe there was a year one version of it, but I can't even remember. Now, Thin Line is one of those weapons that like, I don't know, it has a very funky sound to it. Like some guns just sound like a gun, right? This gun, it doesn't sound like a gun. It just kind of sounds like a fart. Despite the way it sounds though, it makes up for it by being one of the more consistent 110s out there. I actually really like this weapon. Now, granted, I have a very good roll, slide shot, zim moment, ricochet rounds. I mean, everything here is boost consistency. We're sitting at a healthy range stat of 84. Needless to say, Thin Line is a very forgotten hand cannon that can roll with some fantastic consistency traits 
as well as some other things. Dragonfly, Rampage, pair that with something like Slide Shot, Auto Loading Holster, Triple Tap, running and gunning situations, man. You can't go wrong with it. And it does void damage. Slap that on with Nezerak Sin. You got it, man. Again, like some of the other 110s we just mentioned, though. Getting Sunset. Sad times, fella. Sad times. However, if you are a collector like myself, I would still keep it. I mean, I'm keeping mine. This roll is still one of the better filling 110s out there, especially with the right roll. So if you come across a really good roll, you might as well keep it. Now, the final 110 is actually the Black Armory Bad News. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. I've actually got a good roll here. Outlaw, Kill Clip, Akaraz Rounds. Not the best range stat, but not the worst. Bad news. If you can get past that fat hit. Man, that thing has got a fat head up there. So big, you can barely see around it. You know what I'm saying? If you can get past that, Bad News is actually a very deadly hand cannon. I feel like every 110, by the way, on this list, I've been like, oh my god, it's so good. It's so deadly. It's consistent. Ah. Look, I'm hyping these weapons up, obviously. But let me just be real with you here. All of these 110s with the right roll are some of the best filling weapons in the game. Bad News included. And whatever 110 you bring into the next sandbox, I think all of these will serve you just fine, especially the ones that don't get sunset. Obviously, you want to prioritize weapons, True Prophecy, Sturm, Criminal's Dagger, as they won't be getting Sunset. But even these other 110s, all of them are some of the most consistent hand cannons in the game. If these weapons get the buff we think they're going to get, the game-shifting meta that Bungie's going to try to present here, all of these 110s with the right roll are going to be deadly inside of Crucible. Some of these are a little more unique than others. Obviously, like Warden's Law is a little more unique. Bad News is actually one of the more unique hand cannons because it rolls with perks that were actually only available in Black Armory. Things like Air Assault. Yeah, when was the last time you used Air Assault? Don't worry, don't use it. It's garbage. But I think some of us still collect weapons just to collect them. But I will say, going into this next expansion, be careful what you clear in your vault. You might have a God Road 110 just sitting right there, looking all innocent. And you might think to yourself, I don't need it. Who needs that weapon? It's a 110. Don't be that guy. Trust me. I have deleted God Rolls mere hours before a sandbox update was released that made the weapon that I just delete meta. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.